passing midrib protection. Very important before you even do this, you need to make sure that you can distinguish between the backup line and the main line. In the past, we used to have one rope protector over both ropes, but now we have one rope protector over each rope and both rope protectors are connected to the backup line. The reason for that is because low stretch rope has three to 5% stretch in it, if I pull down on my main line, it just pulls through the rope protector. Whereas if I was to pull down on the backup line, I'm actually pulling the rope protectors down with it. So on a longer set of ropes, three to 5% stretch, if you're basically climbing on the backup line, you actually pull the rope protectors out of the way for what they're protecting. Now, always remember, rope protectors are your last line of defense. Do not use them as your first. There's always better ways to rig. Okay, so I'm gonna get on, get up, and then we'll show you what to do with fast mid rope protection. Okay, so we're up here by the mid rope protection. All we need to do now is open up the mainland rope protector so that I can get my hand jammer. Jimmer up. Right, once I'm at this point, I can open up this one a little bit, get this back up up so that I can prevent putting myself in a four factor greater than one. Right. Now, a little bit tricky here because of the angle the rope is set up at, but what we do is push yourself back a little bit and push the gym out. And up you go. Now, it's not going in quick movements here. So, let me just tighten this up. Oh, ah, here we go. So, I'm not going in quick movements here, I'm going in little movements. But, as you can see, I've still got the rope protector in. It's not closed. But it's in and the rope is touching the rope protector and not the beam. Yes, this is a training center, so we have added extra measures in place. Now, shunt almost in a full factor one for the backup. So I'm going to put my other backup in place above the knot here. So we can get that part out the way. And I remove my other one. So now, even though it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to go past this, I'm still going to remain in something less than a full factor one, which is what we want. Okay, so again, to go up a little bit, push my juma up. Now, I use my foot loop atria to keep me back. And I stand up. Once I'm there, pull that little bit of slack. Sit back, extend your leg like that, and it keeps the rope away, which is what I want. I don't want this rope touching the beam. When I want to push my juma up, I use my other hand to push myself back, push my juma up again. And I stand up a little bit more. Now I can push the back up. At this point, I bring my knees up. I stick this rope protector back on the mainline rope can find it. There it is. And remember guys, don't be lazy. Install it properly. Because if someone else comes and climbs on this after you and it's not installed properly, it defeats the purpose of using the rope protector. Now, rope protectors only protect against mild edges. So even this I-beam here, without my round bar on it over there, it will still cut through the rope protector very slowly but as the ropes move back and forth back and forth over time with weight on it it starts eating through the rope protector so rope protectors are not efficient use other methods available to you and we go up a bit more get myself back stand back nicely up a bit more and now I'm technically past it. So, in order to go back down, I need to do a change over. My descender in. Pull up the slack. Stand up. 
remove the crawl, close it, come back slowly and sit down on your descender. And then remove the demand. Now you have changed over. Okay. Now on site you might find something like this. So it's very tricky. I've got something behind me, I've got something in front of me. It's to illustrate going through a tank. So at all times, I don't want that rope, rope to touch the edge. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start descending, and I'm going to bend my knees when I do it. All right. All right. Cool. Now I'm here, leaning against the beam behind me. And guys, if you're on site, get someone to help you do this. You don't have to do this all by yourself. So, very important little part here. Get that rope protector back on now already. Even though it's not fully on, just the top's off. Bend your legs. Pull. Bring it down. Now, either put your knees there and keep going, which is fine. Work with the rope protector again. Now, while you're still in somewhat of a semi-comfortable position, open up the other rope protector, put your other backup one, and then open it all the way. Just get it to the rope so you can put the backup on. All right. Cool. As you can see, four factor one. You can remove the other one. And guys, it's not comfortable. So, right, cool. Now, put my other leg back up, descend a little bit more, and I can push myself back like that now. Right, keep bringing this rope protector down with you. Okay, and I'm past it. You don't have to go and hang upside down like a monkey. None of that stuff. Continue with the rope protector. Get it on properly first. Now here, bring the back up down. Everything's in line. Make sure my rope protectors are closed properly. Push yourself back. Get that one pulled down correctly. Make 100% sure they're both pulled down. They're both installed correctly and you are done, you have passed it. Guys, it's not a comfortable position to be in. So take it slowly, do it one step at a time and do it right. Okay, thanks for watching.